what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to help you clean up your form on sit-ups so you no longer have any excuse to not train your abs at home. And if you're new to my channel, you should know that I have hundreds of videos to help you correct your form on a multitude of exercises on my website, musculostrength.com, all organized by body pot and level of difficulty. So before we dive in, know that at any time you can click this link right here for a free 7-day trial of my website where you can not only check out the videos on proper form, but gain access to my custom meal planner and 12-week workout programs as well. Now, when it comes to performing the perfect sit-up, there are three golden rules that you should always keep in mind. And the first one is that sit-ups are not a speed contest. Fast as f boy. <laughs> Still fast as f So listen. The sit-up is one of the few exercises that I recommend as a pure isolation movement. And what I mean is that the goal here isn't necessarily progression going as heavy as you can and using momentum and all those things, okay? It's more about feeling the entire rectus abdominis stretch and contract on every repetition while simultaneously keeping as much engagement out of your hip flexors as possible. This is because the rectus abdominis, or abs, main function is to flex the lower and mid spine, and the best way to get started is to anchor your feet. Locking your feet in place will help you keep the focus of the movement on flexing your spine and allow you to boost the intensity of your sit-up by bringing your glutes closer to your feet. Then once in place, what you want to do is start flexing your spine by sitting up one vertebrae at a time. The flexion begins at the lower spine near your sacrum, and from there, as each vertebrae is flexed, you move up to the lower back and mid-back until you end up at the top of the position with your chest up against your legs and your spine fully flexed. But if you find yourself in the top position and your back is straight, you're doing it wrong. Remember, we need full flexion to contract the abs, so really make sure when you perform each rep, your back is curved at the top of the movement. Which leads us to golden rule number two. Proper breathing is half the exercise. Now you know how with most exercises you're supposed to take in a deep breath to brace your core before you start your reps. Well don't do that here. In fact, you need to do the exact opposite and make a mental note of breathing out as your spine is flexing. If you don't, you're basically creating your own solid roadblock that's preventing you from being able to contract your abs as you perform your repetitions. So get into the habit of breathing out as you sit up and then taking in your breath as you go down and extend your spine. In fact, if after golden rule number one you realize that you were never going into full spinal flexion at the top of your reps, this is most likely the reason why. You were holding in just enough of your breath for it to act like a roadblock not allowing you to fully sit up during your reps. And golden rule number three is that now that you've gotten the first two rules down, you do want to progress with the movement. Guys, I think that because the sit-up is a very simple exercise and you can literally do it anywhere, most people don't take enough advantage of it. So if you've gotten strong enough that you can now do 30, 40, or even 50 reps in a row, there are quite a few very simple ways to increase the intensity. The first way would be to hold some weight behind your head. 5 to 10 pounds is all it takes to intensify the movement enough to keep you in the 12 to 15 rep range per set and make sure you always hold the weight behind your head. Doing sit-ups with the weight on your chest isn't really doing that much for you. That's why if you hold 25 pounds on your chest, you can still most likely crank out 20 repetitions. But as soon as you move that weight behind your head, yeah, you start to feel it a lot more. Also, you should really think about picking up an ab mat because it will allow you to fully stretch out your abs during the bottom portion of the movement, which in turn will amplify the amount of tension placed on your abs during your reps. Then you combine that with holding some weight behind your head and it's game over. Trading abs at home will once again prove to be the most effective method for building a solid six pack and you might even get creative and start incorporating some twisting variations as you get stronger. There's the traditional one side at a time twist as you come up, alternating sides between reps, or the good old sit up with a double twist at the top, bringing your elbows side to side as far as you can before returning back to the starting position. I'd say give both variations a shot as they're great for incorporating a bit of obliques into your home abs training. Be sure to like and subscribe if you would like to see more quick tutorial videos like this, 
And remember, you can join my site for seven days free by clicking this link right here, and it'll give you access to my entire workout database, meal planner, and custom 12-week muscle building programs. And as always, more good stuff coming soon. See you guys.